sometimes looking at a menu makes one wish for an inner guide that would make the perfect choice, especially when so many of the options seem so appetizing. Shivani Padiachi has solved this conundrum very neatly by creating a special seafood platter and allowing your dinner guests to enjoy whatever takes their fancy. Being a pescatarian, I absolutely adore seafood. So you can imagine my delight when I discovered that today Vani and I would be cooking up a seafood feast. Hi Vani! Welcome. Thank you, so lovely to see you. Okay, it's been forever. Vani, the thought of a seafood feast has my mouth watering. I can't wait to get started. Should we get to it? Yes, come on. Bunny, what's first up on our menu? We're going to be making Jinga Nisha, which is prawns marinated with some roasted sesame seeds. And then we're going to crush that up a little bit so that releases that nutty flavor and also the sesame oil that comes from that. And then we have shelled and deveined prawns. So the first ingredient is a little bit of paneer. It's going to bind this marinade together. And I've got some hung yogurt, just two dollops. And I've got some ground cloves. I've roasted them and I've just ground them in a pestily mortar. A little bit of black pepper, a pinch of green cardamom and the fenugreek. All I'm going to do is just give it a little bit of a... Oh, can you smell that? Mm, beautiful. Yeah. A touch of salt for seasoning. Just a good squeeze of some lime juice. Oh, that smell. Mm, fresh, citrus. Amazing. Just a little bit of ginger garlic. So this is for our next ingredient, which is the My roasted favorite. sesame seeds. I don't want to really break it down, not all of that. And also it will release that beautiful sesame oil in. All I'm gonna do is just add a handful of that. I'm gonna retain some of this to finish off in the garnishing process. Give that a good mix, please. For skewering, we're going to use just a normal skewer and then when we skewer, always skewer them quite tight. We're going to put three in together. So while you're skewering the next few prawns, I'm going to get a pan hot so we can start cooking the prawns as soon as they're ready. And that's the last one, all done. Perfect. The pan's heated up and ghee is in. We're going to cook that for about two to three minutes on each side and then we're going to turn it over, also give it a quick cook. As you can see, they're beautiful charred on one side, so we're going to flip that over. So these are looking really, really good now. So Krishma, can you pass me a platter and then garnish with some fresh coriander? Sure. And then pass me the coriander mint sure. chutney and two limes, please. Is this it? Yes, perfect. There we go. And there's the limes. All right. All I'm going to do is some cheeks, just so our guests can squeeze on their own lime juice. To really finish this dish up, I'm going to add some pomegranate. Now, Vani, is there a trick to cutting a pomegranate? There's an absolute secret to it. Head and tail of pomegranate. And then you see it's got little segments. Mm -hmm. So you're just going to run your knife down those segments. It's beautiful. And then we dissect. Easy peasy. And just like peeling little pips. Oh, it really makes everything look so pretty. This dish is done, so let's set that aside and start off the next dish. I'll take this for you. Vani, I'm seeing a few of my favorite ingredients. <laughs> yeah, what is the next dish? So we're going to make prawn masala. So we've got some prawns, white gravy. Okay, before we carry on, can you explain the white gravy to me? Cashew nut oil gravy is made with cashew nuts that's just boiled. And then I cut it with a little bit of ginger, garlic and ghee. Add the cashew nut puree to it. Add some yogurt, a little bit of water and just cook that until it's a beautiful thick gravy. All good things that we want. <laughs> so the pan is nice and hot. And to that, I'm going to add a good block of the ghee and the fenugreek seeds. So we want that to fry off. Same with our black mustard seeds, some curry leaves, some dried chilies. So I'm just going to add about five or six and I'm just going to crack it in my hand. A little bit of coriander seeds and we're just frying off these spices so it starts popping because that also releases all that beautiful flavors and oils that's in it. And in goes our prawns. You're going to fry the prawns off a little bit. And just so that the meat absorbs that beautiful spices. As you can see, that prawns is already starting to cook and those flavors coming through. So in goes a little bit of our Kashmiri spice, some turmeric powder, just a quick whiz. 
just to incorporate that flavor in. A little bit of our white gravy. Smelling good. And some chopped masala. What goes into your chopped masala? Onions, some tomatoes, and I've added in some whole spice like green cardamom, <laughs> black pepper, bay leaves, cinnamon stick, and we just stuck that and just cook it. So it's almost like a chutney. A chutney, yes, a chutney. exactly. Essentially, that's what it is. So that's looking good. Oh, now that smells <laughs> incredible. So all I'm going to add is some tamarind water because you want that little bit of a tartness and, and tamarind gives it such a beautiful flavor. Krishma, can you pass me a lime, please? Here we go. Must I cut it for you? Yes, please. And then you can do a bit of a squeeze on. That's great. So I'm going to do a bit of salt. I'm going to add some coconut milk. You want a nice little gravy, not too gravy-ish. And we're just going to simmer that off for about two to three minutes. The last ingredient we're going to add in is our julienne ginger. So that gives it that beautiful ginger flavor to it. Our tomato gravy has just pulled that all together. And you like it spicy as well. Oh, you know I do, Vani. <laughs> Coriander? Yes, please. Just a little bosh on the top. And then I'm going to finish off with some tomato concussa. Just gives it that beautiful texture and flavor. Let's add this to our table, shall we? Perfect. The prawns were followed by another fish dish. Kalishma, our next curry is tomato machli. So the fish I have is yellowtail. It's a beautiful firm fish because you don't want one of the flaky fishes. And our ingredients is exactly the same with one change up where I have a yellow gravy instead of a white gravy. And that's cashew nuts cooked with yogurt, with a little bit of deggy mitch and a little bit of turmeric. So that gives it a beautiful flavorful and it's a bit more spicier. Because you know, with prawns, you wanted a subtle flavor. With the yellowtail, you want a nice bold flavor in. So our pan's beautifully and hot. And you do want quite a bit of ghee in this. So once again, our mustard seeds, fenugreek seeds. Same curry leaves again handful of dried chilies. Also, I never break them. And to this, now I'm just going to add in the fish. Bonnie, why have you kept the fish in such big portions? When it cooks, it will cook softer. When you're stirring as well, it will break a bit. So you don't want that to go soft and all mush. I'm just going to give it a little flip. And that's got a good seal on that. So I'm going to do a little bit of the ginger garlic puree and some coriander ground, some cumin. Just fry that off. And I've got a little bit of the Kashmiri spice, turmeric powder. Just gently turn so all that spiciness gets mixed in. For this last ingredient, we're using yellow gravy. And Masala. Now, because all these sauces have been pre-cooked, they need very little cooking. Some fenugreek powder, a little bit of salt, and we can add some lime and tamarind water, please. Perfect. And if you could squeeze up half a lime what? juice for me, please. Perfect. Coconut milk. And this will cook a little longer than the prawn did because it's much more meatier. It smells really good. This flavor's all pulling through. Mm -hmm. Coriander? You could add that in, please. So we're ready to plate this dish. Here we go. Would you hold up that dish for me? It smells delicious. Okay, I'm just going to spoon up some sauce. Look how delicious and decadent that looks. Shall I add it to the table? Yes, please, and then we'll bring out the next dish. So, Karishma, our last dish is machli amistri. Explain that to me. <laughs> That's deep fried goujons of fish. A little bit of Dijon mustard, ginger <laughs> garlic, a little bit of vinegar, and the dried fenugreek. And then, once again, a quick squish with the hands. And yes, please, this? yes. And then I'm going to add a little bit of salt to this process. So all you're going to do is just squish 
between your palms and pop it into the next bowl. We don't want all that liquid in. And then you're gonna mix it with your fingers to just give you the feel of how thick the batter is. The first in is besan flour. That's for texture. And the next is corn flour. That also helps because besan flour will make it a bit heavier. So we want it as a loose batter. It's well mixed in. And then I'm gonna add some, just a little bit of water just to bring all those ingredients together. That looks good. So let me pop this into the fryer, you wash up, and then it'll be ready to be plated up. It's looking good. Krishma, perfect timing. Can you pass me the platter, please? Sure. Looks good. Smells even better. It's gonna taste so delicious. Can you do me some lime cheeks and then I'll finish frying up and then we can eat. Perfect. That looks gorgeous. I've got the last few ready. So there I'm just go. going to tip that onto the center. So our dish is done. Let's take that to the table. Wow, Vani, we certainly did cook up a seafood feast. Look how beautiful this looks. Gorgeous. Krishma, to complement and finish off our seafood feast, I've made a vegetable biryani, a beetroot pickle, an aubergine acha, and my famous rogani naan. Vani, thank you so much for sharing your recipes today. I always love cooking with you, but now I cannot wait to taste. Let's start. You really don't have to be a pescatarian to be delighted by Vani's selection, with its authentically Eastern alternative to the good old pan-fried theme.